This time on Travelers. We take a hop across the pond to visit the team at KEF. They've invited us to check out some new top secret active speaker technology. Then Jordan sets off the whole hotel's fire system with his farts. And then we skip over to the Netherlands to get the scoop on Sphinx, a new old speaker brand being resurrected by International Audio Holding. Here we go again. Off once again, this time to Kef, a place we've been a few times, but we really like to go because Jack Oakley Ground, kind of head tech guy and crew, always have a lot to show, a lot to say, a lot to demo. And this time we're going to be demoing some new tech that's applicable to active speakers. And I can talk about it now because this video won't be out till later, but it might revolutionize active speakers a little bit. What's next is we hope that the taxi drivers out here can arrange that. And then we're gonna probably sit on our asses because it's only 9.30 and hotels generally aren't ready till three. And we're just gonna pester them in the lobby till they let us in our rooms. So we landed in the UK tired and jet lagged. After a really short nap, we decided to kill time by doing what you do in Britain, visit the pub. Yeah. <laughs> it's designed to make me look taller. Perfect. After that, we went back to the hotel and waited for Jack to come and pick us up for dinner. It's always a pleasure to see Jack, and Doug was especially excited because we still didn't know what the big reveal was going to be for the tech that we were here to cover. Cheers, everybody. Day one shooting at Kef, sister company of Celestion, owned by GP Acoustics. And we have Jack over there who's going to be doing all the talking, and Jordan helping with the filming. We're getting into some big brain stuff here. It's actually a continuous winding. As soon as we got to the factory, we got the scoop on Kef's new active speaker technology. This new Vico tech is something completely new for Kef. It is launching in the new soundbar, but Jack explained he was aiming to incorporate it into more audiophile products in the near future. Velocity control technology, or Vico, employs a built-in sensor within the bass driver. It monitors coil motion in real time, employing a negative feedback loop to minimize distortion. But I recommend checking out our inside video where Jack goes into more depth of how this works because I'm never gonna do it justice. The engineering team also set up a few demos to help us wrap our heads around exactly what was going on. Hey, in a second, we're gonna see transformer coupling, right? Yeah. And uncoupling. So interference and not. This is the demo um, of effectively two different types of sensing coil. So we have our amplifier, which is connected to a resistor and an inductor. So this is sort of similar to a real loudspeaker, which has an impedance of four ohms and it has some inductance. So in a typical sensing coil, so what I've got is another inductor, um, which if I just send some audio through. So at the moment I'm sending quite a high level of 10 kilohertz. And if I move this inductor, close even just by moving it close it picks up the original signal so on this coil which you're trying to use to guess things about your speaker you're getting mostly the signal you're sending into it and that's a bad thing yeah and it's, it's useless you already know what signal you're sending in you don't you want to know is you want to know what this is actually doing so in that instance you need something that's attached to this but does not pick up anything inductively and then if i move my probes over from a normal inductor <clears throat> to here soldered very very delicately is here is our flexible pcb so this is the heart of vico so we effectively have four inductors so this is four coils of wire um but they're wound in different directions so the two wound in one direction and two wound in the other direction and what that means is you get cancellation so when i move this coil over this other coil you will get you'll see nothing on the scope so if i orientate like that yeah get it perfectly aligned yeah so so the alignment is is completely crucial so if i move it off to one side or angle it very slightly you, nice, you need it exactly <clears throat> it is absolutely perfect which if we're winding a voice coil around this we can guarantee in this demo, it's relying on the steadiness of my hand. 
And this is the heart of Kef's new tech. It is. It is. When Jack told you he had something super game changing, what did you initially think it was? What was your guess? Steerable sound, because that was a big thing like 10 or 15 years ago. But they got something. Actually, that's kind of cool because this will go into audiophile speakers. It's going to a soundbar first, but eventually into audiophile active speakers. And the reveal. <laughs> So Chris, what are you filming here? So the challenge today is filming quite possibly the smallest thing we've ever had to film. Um, there's, I think it's 30 meters of wire wrapped up in these flexible PCBs and the best piece of equipment we've got for that is this probe lens. We can get in nice and close, we can actually see with uh, pretty high detail that you know these things are wound in there. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not easy. All right, so day one of filming at KEF is done. Today, we started with the new kind of technology that they're gonna be using, which is called Vico. And then at the end of the day, I also got to get on a podcast with Jack and talk about uh, the manufacturing and QA process uh, that KEF has across its different factories. And then I got to sit down and listen to my absolute all-time favorite speakers, which are the KEF Blades. Technically, I listened to the Blade Twos. They're still incredible. They're absolutely phenomenal. And uh, yeah, that was the best way to kind of uh, cap off day one. And then, of course, we went out for dinner with the Kef guys and talked even more shop. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Then, after we got back to our hotels and fell asleep, around 1 a.m., the fire alarm went off driving us all out into the parking lot. So Jordan, I hear the fire started in your room, serious. <laughs> yeah, apparently, I don't know what's going on. The alarm went off when I was taking, going to the bathroom <laughs> the other night, let's keep this PG. And we uh, were out for Indian food. <laughs> <laughs> so Jordan, you were responsible for the evacuation? Apparently. Was it the Indian food? <laughs> Day two at Kef. We finished up some more interviews and finished up a few shots we didn't have time for the first day. And Kef has great quality control. I can say that from speakers we've tested. Jack, the head R&D guy, will often send me line reference measurements. These are line references. What does that mean? It means that they're the models that the new models get tested against to see if there's any deviation. And Kef holds really high tall, really high tall, High tolerances or low tolerances? They don't deviate much from the reference, if at all. <laughs> I never know if it's low tolerance or high tolerance. So they're making a blade two right there, I think. A blade two cabinet right here. It's not that heavy, the cabinet itself. One arm, or I'm really strong. And that's a reference. One, two, three, I don't know. One, reference one. All wood cabinet. Check this out. Blade cabinets, the red. So they move a lot, of, a lot of units here. Yeah, so these are blade twos, I believe. Yeah, this has got to be blade two. Blade two or blade one? I don't know. It's hard to. Or no, no, that's blade one. That's, well, it says blade two up there. Where's blade one? So this is a, this would be a blade one. This is a blade one. I had trouble telling them. So this is a blade one. It's got a bigger yeah, that's, woofer. That's the same size. Blade two. So that's blade one? Yeah, look, blade one frosted blue. If I were to get a pair, I'd either get the blue, which is what I reviewed, or the gray. That's what I like. The red is super flashy, but you might tire about that over time. I don't know. Oh, the black, the matte black. That's really nice. Kef listening room, end of the day. Who stopped the music? Chris. We can't afford this. We can't afford the licensing. Take two, take two. Done filming at Kef, we told him about the two-day rule because it's true. Three days they'd be sick of us because we shot a lot, didn't we? And we did two podcasts. We did two podcasts. It was a lot. Really, really busy. Day two is a little bit quieter. We actually got some time to listen to the soundbar, uh, which was really cool. It was uh, neat seeing the tech in action. And let's hope that soundbar is released by the time this video comes out because that was a secret. 
Guys here, so I better go wake up Jordan. So we're on our way to International Audio Holding, Crystal Cable, Siltec, HMS, a brand they bought, I think, last year, and then a new brand being resurrected, Sphinx. I've seen renderings of the new speakers under the Sphinx brand. They're cool looking. We're supposed to see for sure one in real life, and they said probably two, and it better be two. We arrived in Nemegan and got checked into our hotel. It was in this cool old school. Shortly after, Victor from Siltec came and picked us up, and we walked downtown to a cool little restaurant and a bar to get caught up. Day one at Siltec Crystal HMS Sphinx. Got a lot to cover. Nice hotel. So day one hat. If I look tired, there's a reason. International Audio Holding. Siltec, Crystal Cable, HMS Electronic, and by the time this video launches, a new old brand, Sphinx. I say new because it's kind of going to be new to people, but it's old because it, I think, dates back to the 80s, and it's going to be two speakers to start it off, and that's not going to be all. And we hit the ground running because we got people who are going to be here today and not tomorrow, and not today and here tomorrow. We got oh, five videos to shoot, but it's going well. The company's doing really well because they got about 10 more people in that production facility than they had last time. They got the engineer guys, they got all that going on, and they seem to have more products than ever. Whenever we visit International Audio Holdings, we know we're in for a busy day. There's so many brands under that one roof. Now that there, there's a lot to cover. They also have one of the most active factories. Lots of employees, lots of products, lots of research going on. There's never any shortage of things to see, and this time, we were really focused on their new speakers, which is still in the prototyping phase. But they were gearing up for the Munich show, and they really wanted to get word out on these new speakers, and that's why we came. Netherlands in the spring is absolutely beautiful. So we hit up a patio with the rest of the team to unwind. Cheers. Okay. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Do you always look forward to Stroop Waffles, Doug? My first one so far. This would have been my 19th one last time. <laughs> so I don't know how old this speaker is. It's a Celtec Pantheon, 25 years old. The quality of workmanship is exceptional. Usually on these older speakers, you see seams and stuff where the materials change, but it's exceptional and it's almost perfect to this day. So what's it like being interviewed by Doug? Well, Duck always uh, makes me happy. Duck is, I would say, the most precise interviewer I know in the world. He hears every word you say, and it's funny. If I make some mistake or some wrong wording or whatever, or wrong English, he will repeat the complete sentence that I said before with all the mistakes and say, and you should say that again in a different manner. This is really a unique capability. I don't know anyone being able to do that. Well, we finally found a use for print magazines. Oh, they do have a need. Yeah, you can't do that with a website. True. Wrapped up day two filming at International Audio Holding, not just Siltec and Crystal Cable anymore, which wraps up four days total of shooting in England and here. And this was a really great trip because oftentimes we concentrate on cables while we're here, but now we're concentrating on cables, but also a new brand and speakers and we loved doing that and we listened to the element three one of the new sphinx speakers prepare them they were outstanding and about the new element speakers i wasn't sure what to expect because i saw renderings of them before i came here and you could just build a cabinet that shape but then when i walked around to one side of a prototype and i looked inside i'm like whoa there's stuff going on because there's these chambers inside kind of a transmission line loading in the base, but different. And then also kind of a, a taper tube type idea on the mid range. So some real tech inside. And I told them, you got to sell this speaker from the inside out. It's not just a bunch of drivers in a box. Now we're off to a concert, but not an electronic concert like we went to last year, but an acoustic one. So Gabby drove us to Amsterdam where we got to attend an orchestral concert in a historic hall right in the center of the city. We even sat just a few rows behind the seats that are designated for the King and Queen of the Netherlands. It was pretty cool. So that completes our last trip for the first half of 2025. Next, Denmark, other parts of Europe, 
the UK. We're going to finish off 2025 with a bang.